Section 6.1, the natural exponential function. So the number e is this irrational number, irrational because it goes on forever, um, but we get e equals 2.718, 281, and so on. It just keeps going and going. So the natural exponential function will be a exponential function with base e. Um, this will actually be probably the most common and most important one you'll use in calculus. It just it has easier properties than all the other bases. Um, so on the left side, we have the graph of e to the x. So we're going to go up. We're going to start off flat and go up slowly. You'll notice it goes through 0, 1, just like all the other exponential functions. And then the other points just involve e. And then for e to the negative x, that would be the same as 1 over e to the x. So this would be a base that's less than 1. And so it's going to start off really tall and then slowly go down and flatten out. And it also goes through 0, 1. And it'll have all the same properties as before. So the same asymptotes, the same increasing, decreasing. Um, so let's check out some examples. So let's graph 1 minus e to the x plus 5. So I'm going to start off with our base graph of y equals e to the x. We're just going to do a quick sketch. It starts off flat, goes up really high, and we know it goes through 0, 1. And then we'll go through the transformations. So the first transformation, we work from the inside out. So x plus 5 is an f of x plus c in parentheses, which is horizontal. So we're going to go move to the left by 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So instead of going through 0, 1, we now go through negative 5, 1. Same shape. And then we're told it reflects upside down from the negative outside. It reflects about the x-axis. That's when we have negatives outside the function, negative f of x. So this is basically upside down. You can find these back in chapter 2 if you need to review. So when it goes upside down, instead of going through negative 5, 1, it goes through negative 5, negative 1. And then our final graph is that it goes up 1. And I think just to make it a little clearer, I'll draw it on a new graph. So when we go up 1, now we'll go through negative 5, 0. And we'll make that same shape but upside down. And then our asymptote used to be at y equals 0. And so the asymptote also went up 1. So my new asymptote would be y equals 1. And that's a graph. Um, you totally could also make a table, um, but I don't think we really like the number e that much. So I find it easy to just do transformations. So let's check out example 7. We're going to use graphing to solve. So let's make a quick table for y equals 2 to the x so that we can figure out where 16 is. We're trying to prove that 2 to the x, when is 2 to the x bigger than 16? So let's make a graph. Let's make sure we have room for 16 because it looks like 16 is important. Uh, maybe we'll just go by 2s. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Uh, 14, 16. Yeah, 16. There we go. And then we can go by 1s for the x's, because the x's don't need to be as big. All right, so 2 to the x. We've already graphed this, but maybe we need a little refresher. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, we already know 0, 1 is always a point, so I'm just going to immediately do 0, 1. Um, 1, 2. 2 to the 1 is 2. So our next point is 1, 2. 2 to the 2 is 4. So we go over to 2 and up to 4. Um, 2 cubed is 8, so over to 3 and way up to 8. Um, I'm just doing points because we need to figure out when 16 happens. So 2 to the 4th is 16. So over to 4 and way up to 16. So we'll sketch the graph. We already know the shape. Um, I just wanted to find 16. So here's 16. And we want to figure out greater than 16. So greater than 16 would be considered above. 
And then what I want to do is I want to go back to the graph and we want to find when is it bigger. So we go down and it looked like it was four or more. So X would be bigger than four. And that makes sense, right? Because once I plug in five, we get two to the fifth is what, 32. So we start to get numbers bigger than 16. So all of this part of the graph, the part above 16, um, is when X is bigger than four. Cool, and one final example. Um, we wanna find X and Y intercepts. So I don't really know how to solve this, um, but let's just see if we can find the intercepts. So I'm gonna do the Y intercept first, because the Y intercept is when we plug in zero, X equals zero. So F of zero equals E, equals zero e to the zero plus 10 e to the zero. So first term goes away, 10 e to the zero would be 10 times one or 10. So my y-intercept will be zero, 10. And then my x-intercept is a little more work. So we'll set it equal to zero. x e to the x plus 10 e to the x equals zero. We probably have no idea how to solve this, but I do notice that e to the x in common. So that means we can factor that out. So e to the x, parentheses, x plus 10. And then we can just solve those individually, just like other factoring problems. So we can say e to the x equals zero, or x plus 10 equals zero. And we actually just learned that e to the x actually never equals zero. Whether we know that we learned that or not is another thing. Um, but e to the x was this graph. Remember, y equals zero was an asymptote, which means it never equals zero. So there's no solution. So there's no intercept from the e to the x part. Um, but x plus 10 equals zero gives me x equals negative 10. So negative 10, zero would be the intercept. And that's it. We'll get um, we'll do more with exponents later.